All right, so time to push the Cascade Lake X 10980XE a bit further. So uh, recently I saw a very famous German guy called Tank Carp pushing his uh, old 9980XE to really high levels after he uh, lapped his uh, CPU. So uh, I thought about doing the same on my 10980XE because it's doing so amazingly well on water like 5.1 on Cinebench and uh, Geekbench 3 but uh, so far I wasn't able to uh, beat my better 9980XE at least yet on LN2 so I'm sure it should be doing better because it's so amazingly good on uh, water so there, there is a chance that the IHS isn't that good when you use uh, an LN2 pot like the T-Rex so uh, there is a chance that the center of this IHS is, is a little bit like lower than the sides. So uh, since that these CPUs are soldered, just like the 9980XC, uh, we have to uh, improve the quality of the IHS uh, as we cannot delete them and use a custom solution. The, my better 9980XC or even actually the, both of them they have been lapped by the uh, lapping machine by Wins in Taiwan at the EVJ Labs. But as I cannot get it done now, I have to lap it myself. So uh, I will be doing it the old way. It's, a, it's quite a long and tedious process, so it's quite boring to watch. So I, I will not be filming the entire part of it. But uh, the very like uh, simple way of doing it is that we want to get the IHS to bare copper with a bit more rough sandpaper first i wouldn't use lower than uh, 200 grit so 200 grit is the first one i would use and then once we get it to bare copper we will even it out going to 600 grit 1000 grit and i will use even 2000 grit uh, finer grit than 2000 isn't really uh, needed many even stop at 1000 i had i have some uh, special uh, 5,000, 6,000 and even 8,000 sandpapers and they really make it a mirror finish like a complete mirror but uh, the uh, gain is pretty much zero after 1,000 or 2,000 grit so it's not really required so the uh, main part is just to get it to bare copper and even out the possible uh, uh, imbalances on the IHS and uh, actually, and also the uh, copper has better thermal uh, properties than the uh, uh, nickel coating on top of the edges. So we can actually even improve the thermals a little bit by uh, sanding the uh, nickel plating off. So uh, that's what we will do. I, I have uh, a piece of glass that I can use where I will just tape the sandpapers and then, then I will just do... I will wet the sandpaper and I will then just move the IHS by, or, the, or the CPU by its own weight on top of the sandpaper. M use a mirror or a large piece of glass for doing it because the surface has to be as flat as possible. So I would not use a common uh, wooden table like this. But yeah, so I will get on doing it and I will then I will just show you short clips during the process and after it has been done. And that's pretty much how you lap the CPU. So I'm using a glass surface on the uh, floor and uh, I have just taped the sandpapers against it. And uh, if you take a look, it's actually easy to note that the center of this particular IHS is much higher than the sides. So uh, it's actually the other way around, which I mentioned at the start, but Anyways, it's very easy to note that this IHS isn't like properly fa uh, flat at all. So this might actually do very good when we want to use this with the LN2 pot. So I will just keep doing this like this until the entire IHS is down to bare copper. And then I will move on to uh, finer grits. So this is the longest part of the whole process to get, to, to get the whole IHS to bare copper. Alright, 
after lapping the CPU for a while, it's quite easy to see that there are two uh, quite big uh, pockets on uh, either side of the IHS. So the uh, center was the highest point, and then the very like e like the very edges of the IHS are the uh, second highest point. And it will take uh, quite a bit of time to get the uh, remaining spots to bare copper. Once it's once once it's down to bare copper, I will then just use 600 grit, then 1,000, and then finally 2,000, and we will see. I'm using a bit of water on the sandpaper, so I'm not doing it like completely dry. And that is pretty much it. So I think it's quite all right, but of course I have to test it. Doesn't really matter if it's mirror or not; it just has to be flat. So. Uh, It's not easy to focus, but yeah, it's quite good, I think. Let's just see, but I'm not really expecting uh, improvements, just a water block. So I will, it's best just to uh, like a mount test after testing it with a water block with your CPU uh, LN2 pot and see how the uh, thermal paste spread looks after unmounting the pot. So uh, let's quickly test the CPU and see how it looks like. Okay, so to test the 10980XE, I have now set it up again in the X299 Dark with four sticks of Samsung BDI, same power supply, same, same storage uh, device where I run Windows 10. Of course, this isn't, this isn't like the absolute best way to compare the two temp temperature results because I did not measure the ambient temperature last time. So... Uh, can know the, like the exact figures and uh, this way to mount a water block on the CPU isn't like the uh, like a 100% best way to do it because there is a chance that you might put a little bit more pressure on uh, one corner and much less on one corner because you are just doing it like the way you feel right with fingers if you use for example the EK heads they stop by themselves automatically after some uh, uh, after some way so uh, it's a lot more even pressure when you use those EK heads but we will know at least some kind of result this way so we can pretty much determine if the uh, end result is really really bad so for example if the temperatures have risen a lot from the last time and if the temperature gains are like huge we will see them anyways because now the amb the ambient temperature is roughly the same maybe one degree cooler or warmer. So uh, there's no much, there's no like significant difference in the ambient room temperature. So it's the same. So now now I will test using the uh, Ava Media thing and we will see how it performs. So how I can stream from the BIOS. So we will see. Okay, as I uh had to mess around a little bit as this is the first time I actually used this Avermedia GC513 uh, capture card. Uh, it didn't work from the first attempt but now it seems to work alright. Even the audio I think it's quite good. So uh, let's test the uh, 10 lapped 10980XE now. See what kind of temperature differences we have uh, at 5, 5 GHz and 5.1 but of course you can't really draw good conclusions when you compare the uh, average of the maximums because we didn't measure the ambient temperature last time. And uh, since, I mean, considering the way we mount the water block onto the CPU, there's a lot of like uh, room for variance because it isn't the most effective way to mount a water block on a CPU using long LN2 rods like that because the pressure difference between each corner can differ quite a bit from mount to mount. When you use like a proper mounting kit, like from the EK, it's always a lot more constant. So uh, just bear that in mind, but let's see how it goes. So F12, and we land on, this des uh, on the BIOS, we can see 19 degrees on VRM, 26 on the CPU. So actually let's just load 25 to 26 on CPU, let's load our 
10980XC water profile. So it has 3812, 1110mm, 1.8A volts, 5 gigahertz on the CPU, 34 on the mesh, 1.9 input. I'm not fully sure is it required, but let's use the same input as last time so that we can compare it more easily. 1.23 on the vehicle. 1.22 was the lowest last time, but it might not pass when we try to run 1.22. So we can already see some difference if we run 1.23. So uh, if the uh, difference is like much worse, or if it's greatly improved, we can see that even when we run 1.23 and if we just compare the temperatures. If the uh, temperature has become better, like 5 to 10 degrees, we can see that even without knowing the ambient temperature. Because now it's pretty much quite like, it's quite the same as last time or as always. It doesn't really differ that much in my room. And IMC is same, so F10 and save and exit. Okay, so now we, would, we should land on the desktop. So yeah. So it's open core temp, ambient or idles are like 26 to 31 or 30. Let's open R15. Let's see if it passes at least. So uh, this should be the uh, run last time. So it's so yeah, we can see it was 5 gigahertz, not, not that much. So 5 gigahertz, 1.22 volts, 3.5 on the mesh, same MEMS, same BIOS. Score was 5060. And let's put the core temp side by side so we can see. So the third last core was the hottest all the time, so it was 77 last time. Now it was 75. And remember, I'm running a bit higher vehicle, so 1.23 versus 1.22 last time and third core is now 73 when it was 77 fourth core 74 and 76 last time but we can also note that the first car first core went up by one degree and the coolest core which was the core hashtag eight or the ninth core because the first core is zero that was 60 and uh, now it was 61 so it seems we can draw a conclusion that the uh, maximums have come down a little bit but the lowest values have gone up by a little bit so the delta between the coolest core and the hottest core has uh, like gone down a little bit so that's a good sign but the average might not really might not really differ that much at all so uh, now i could calculate the uh, average of the core maximums and we can see them side by side as well okay so can see it here so the uh, average of the core maximums now with the cpu lapped it was 69.38 and stock was 70.28 so like one degree improvement but uh, as i said the delta has come down so it's very nice that the uh, maximums have gone have gone down because those are usually the cores that fail first so it might help when we run the cpu on ln2 and uh, try to push for the highest frequencies it might help to gain a little bit extra megahertz but this is just my uh, thought so we have to actually test the cpu on ln2 to see and again the ambient can differ a little bit and the actual mount can differ so it's really hard to say the exact like difference in maximums but the uh, delta seems to be quite obvious because again the coolest cores have come up so uh, I think now we could try uh, 5.1 the uh, it required 1.3 to 1.31 last time so we could test and see how stable it is okay so now we are on the desktop again 5.1 1.3 volts 
it might crash because it required 1.31 last time with core temp open. If you run with core temp open, it, it requires a little bit more vehicle than without. And also, if you run real time priority, you can usually pass at a bit lower voltage, but you cannot measure the temperature accurately if Cinebench is running in real time because the whole uh, desktop hangs. So let's try, but it might fail. Well, it passed. So the score is 5,121. And uh, 87, 85, 85 were the hottest calls. So let's see if where I have the previous screen. So it's here. So this was 1.31 volts, 5.1. So uh, let's put them side by side again. Third last core was now 87 versus 93. Third core 85, I mean, third and fourth core were 85 versus 90. So the hardest core has come down by six degrees at best, but the coolest core, well, now it was same. First core was actually harder. So the coolest is still at least the same or maybe slightly up, slightly higher because of the uh, a bit lower voltage. So the uh, situation remains the same. So uh, delta is lower, but uh, the average probably isn't that much better. So average maybe one to two degrees better. So not really that much of a difference, but it might help thanks to the lower maximums. So now we could try, we could try uh, to see if we can pass at lower VCO because it required 1.3 to 1.31 before lapping to pass 5.1 hour 15. So let's try maybe like 1.29. Yeah, I was just trying with, with a VCO of 1.285, but it's not going to pass, but I managed to pass at 1.29. 1 so the screen is here and we've caught them open and see the third and second last call were only 84 and uh, same for third and fourth call but the uh, lowest were still at least the same so uh, that's pretty much the uh, end conclusion about lapping the 1090 xe so can't really recommend it it's no there's not any sense to waste the warranty of your 1000 euro cpu to gain maybe one to two degrees at best the uh, improved delta is is surely good so i need to test the cpu on ln2 to, to see how it how well it performs but anyways doesn't really matter especially for water to uh, lap the cpu the process takes a long time and there's a real risk to actually make it worse it has happened to me before so if you are not like experienced uh, in lapping you might you can actually make it even worse so for example if you lap the cpu against bad surface or if your uh, the way you move the cpu is bad you you can actually even make it uh, even worse so i can't really recommend it nowadays to do the process back then like uh, in 775 days and similar the uh, difference in quality for the uh, intel he integrated heat spreaders was much higher so back then they were really bad some of the CPU IHS were really, really bad, but now it's a lot more even. So that's just my uh, personal opinion about this whole process. So you can gain some, like for example, Dan Cobb gained a lot with his 9980XC, but uh, still, I can I don't, I don't personally really recommend anyone to do this. If you have a CPU that can be deleted, just get a properly, like a proper custom IHS. You will save the time of the ho whole lapping process and uh, you can even get better results. For example, if you have original Skylake X, just get the uh, uh, custom IHS from Barts. You will get at least the same performance or better than a lapped IHS. So uh, it's the same. But anyways, so this is the uh, end result and conclusion about 10980XC Cascade Lake X lapping. 
hope you liked the video and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.